We need to optimize the following boolean functions using a map. It doesn't specify what kind of map that we're going to use. However, we obviously know we need a for variable kmap because we have four variables here. So um, I've drawn out a truth table over here. We're just going to fill things in. We have our function right here we're going to plug in. We have our indexes, which we are going to write out. And then we have our w, x, y, and z, which is also a, b, c, d, and which is also a, b, c, and d. So let's write out our map. We are going to have an a, b like this. It's going to be split, and on top we are going to have our c, d. For a four variable kmap, we have four rows, four columns. So it's going to look just like this. And there are multiple different ways that you could draw a kmap, but this is uh, the easiest for me to read. The reason why it's the easiest for me to read is because it kind of corresponds to how we draw out the truth table. And I just realized that we were going to be starting with A first. So when we write this, we're going to have a W, X, Y, and Z. So when we draw this, we're going to have all the different possible combinations here. And it's going to look like this. We're going to have the same thing on top. It's going to look like this. And when we write this out, we're going to start out with our W, X column first. We're going to write out 0, 0 four times. So it's going to look like this. We're going to write out the next one four times as well. And then we're going to write out the next one four times as well. And then the next one four times as well. So it's going to look just like this. We're going to look at our C and D columns, where here we are just going to go through it. So we're going to do 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And then we are just going to repeat this the entire way down for all of them. And so this is what our truth table is going to look like. We can now write out our indices. We are going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's a really bad 11. But we are going to go all the way to 15. So now we can start off with our functions. We're going to start with this f first. We have our min terms, so we are going to write these out. We know whatever is listed in the min term list, we are just going to have a one. And whatever is not listed in our min term list, we are just going to put a zero there. So all of these are uh, ones and zeros because it is Boolean algebra, basically, or Boolean functions. So now we can write it in our truth table. We're going to write it from left to right. That's how we would go about looking at these indices. So it's going to look like this. We can just fill this in. Again, this is based on the uh, truth table. And so we can see that these correlate pretty well. So looking at this, we can examine this first column right here. We're obviously not going to be looking at the WXs because it goes through all of them. We will look at the YZ though. For the YZ, they're both 0, 0. So we're going to have to invert both of these. We're going to have a not Y, not Z. And now, uh, we can look at the next set of ones. What I'm going to be looking at are these two. Now, we can't look at these three because we know when we um, circle things up to compare, we can only look at something that is two to the n. So we can only, let's say, look at two, four, eight, so on and so forth. So we can't look at three. So we're going to circle these up and examine them. Well, our wx, which uh, I left crossed out when that shouldn't be, is just going to be a zero zero. Well, we know our output's one one, so we'll take our wx and we'll invert it. Now we are going to examine our y in this column, not the z, and the reason why not the z is because this zero and this one are different, so we can't examine them. However, for our y, we have a zero and a zero here. So we will just take the inverse of this. We are gonna have w not, x not, and y not. The next thing that we're going to look at is this one and this one. It's going to be paired with this one and this one as well. We've done something like this previously, and so these are all going to be together. We have these four. Now, let's look at the rows for this, the W and the X. If we look at this row and this row, well, we're going to examine the X because it's both zeros. We're going to have to take the inverse of this, so we have a not X. Now, let's look at the columns. We have zero, zero here, and then a one, zero here. So we're not going to look at the Y. We have to look at the Z, and we're going to take the inverse of this, and this is going to be a Z naught. So we have a plus X naught plus Z naught. And lastly, let's take a look at this little one right here. Well, we can't combine it with this one, which is in the same row, because we have a zero, zero here and then one, one here. So it would be kind of fruitless to do so. Now, let's look at the row, because that's the only thing we can look at. We are going to have our w, 
which we are going to need to invert because it's a zero and our output's a one. So we have a not w. Our x is one, so we'll put that there. And when we look at the column, we have a y and a z. So we can just write y and z. And that is part A done. This is going to be the table for part B. And we'll do part B in blue for our function. So inside of here with our min terms, we are going to have zero for zero, a one for one, zero, zero, four, five, and six are filled in. Then these are all skipped. We have a 10, 11, 12, 13, and 15 with a nothing and 14. So when we write this in here, we're going to have the zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, one. And you can notice that it's kind of in the same series as we have it written in our chart. Now that we have this table drawn out, we can look at this. Well, just like we've had an A with the green, like right here, we're gonna actually do it in green just so we can see the similarities. We're going to make a box. We have these two that we can compare with these two. So all of these are going to be connected. And so with all of these connected, we can examine this. Looking at the rows, we have zero, one and one, one. We know we're not gonna compare A because A is zero and one, but B is one and one. So this is the same as our output. We're not gonna invert it. We're just gonna have our B. Now we look at the columns. So we have these two columns here. We can only examine our C for the same reason. It's a zero though, so we have to put a knot over it to make it a one. And that is going to be it for that part. Next, we can look at these two right here. And with these two, um, if we look in the rows, this A and B, we're gonna see that the only thing that we can examine is A. And it's the same as our output, so we're just gonna have an A here. And then when we look at our column, this CD, it's a one one, so we're just going to write CD here. Next, we can look at these two ones right here. And with these ones, well, let's look at the row first. Um, we actually can't look at these ones. If we look at the row, we have a zero one and then a one zero. Well, both the A and both the B are different. And since they're different, we cannot examine these together. So what we can do instead is, can we try this column? For the same reason that we couldn't combine these two, we can combine these two columns. And so for that, this bad boy is all on his own. But wait, before we say that he's on his own, we can look over here to the left. We have this one in the same row, and since it's in the same row, we can use them. And so this one will help us with this one. Now let's look at the row. Um, we see it's going to be AB. For this, our A is the opposite of our output, so we're going to have a A naught. Our B is the same, so we'll have a B. Now let's look at the columns. For our column, we have a C and a D. Well, we can't look at the C because we get a zero and a one. We can look at the D though, but we would need to invert that. So we're gonna have an A naught, a B, and a D naught. Let's look at another one. Well, we have this one here, and we can combine it with this one to the right of it. And that's because we see that these are the same, and it's in the same row. So uh, we'll have to write this out. So for this, we are going to have a plus looking at the row first. We'll have an A, our B needs to be inverted because it's the opposite of our output. And then we just have a CD because it's the same as our output. And now looking at our column for CD, well, we can't examine D because it's zero and one, but we can examine C because it's zero or because it's one and one. And so we're just going to have our C here. For this last one right here, we're going to use this one right here. We cannot use this one because if we look at the row, we have a one one here and a zero zero here and that wouldn't work when we are trying to combine them. So looking at the top two ones, let's look at the row first, we have AB. We're only gonna be looking at the A part because the Bs are different here. So our A is zero, zero. That means we're gonna to have to take the not of our A. We can look at the column now. We have zero, one. We're going to take the not of our C and then just write in our D. And that is how you would optimize the following Boolean functions using a map, specifically a four variable K map. If you want more four variable K maps or three variable K maps, there are problems that go over this how to in the playlist linked below the like button.